It was all in there. I am here with my friend, uh, my good partner, my buddy, my get, leg get rubbing partner. We rub me. legs every day, uh, every <laughs> week, uh, and then I invite him on my show, purely to rub legs for an hour. I, I, I wish there was a camera to see. <laughs> He just got the so under the leg camera. I out. have a lot of thigh meat, man. But yet, he I'm usually here. wears long shorts. He has short shorts on. Not short <laughs> shorts, shorter shorts. Today, just so these he on my hit Daisy my Dukes. It's Sunday. I wear Daisy Dukes oh, every Sunday. Your Sunday. Yeah, he's on my Sunday Dukes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> my Sun Dukes. I'm here with the <laughs> Craig Wayans. <laughs> Oh, we oh, get, are y'all gonna put sound effects? No, there? this is it. Oh, that was just oh shit. <laughs> oh, Craig, Craig, <laughs> oh. Craig, Craig. We don't have the budget <laughs> for a sound effect. That's like the first show after a zombie apocalypse. People <laughs> that showed up. <laughs> oh, Craig, Craig. <laughs> Thank you, man, for uh, hopping on. Always, man. You know what it is. Man. I appreciate. It. Welcome back. This is C minus Society. So let me run down C minus Society oh, for you stuff. real quick, Craig. So I met Craig two th- 2014. When was what the funny? That? Yeah, was that? No, it's two thousand, like around two thousand twelve. That, damn, that long ago? Yeah, yeah. So I met Gregory Jones Wayans. That's his full name. Gregory, it's <laughs> Gregory sure. Jones Wayans. Uh, I met Craig at like 2013-ish on What the Funny. What the Funny was a uh, online uh, network started by Marlon and uh, affiliates, correct? Yes. In a nutshell. And um, and Craig, Marlon so Wayans. Marlon Wayans. Yeah. And then uh, Tony and DC brought me on. To help with their podcast, a hot nothing. Which, if you guys have been down, you know what that's about. You know what a hot nothing's about, right? Yes, he right. he was he was supposed to be the fact checker. But I was the fact he checker. Was never the facts. What do you mean? Facts were never on time. And, you, it uh, was hard to get facts. Internet was a lot slower than it is now. And he spoke <laughs> a whole lot more than a fact checker would. It's like, wait, you didn't even get to the fact yet. Well, I had a good time, and Craig didn't know me at. All at all, he was like, "Who's this little chubby kid? He's Bro, cool." You had to co-sign. Yeah, That's, I don't need much. It's, I appreciate it. And Craig, man, like, my big bro ever since, man. When you get to co-sign. You got to co-sign. Appreciate That's it. What it is? Craig, that kind of dude who will call you uh, that you can call up. He'll respond two days later with some good info. Perhaps depending on what I'm doing. <laughs> depending on what I'm doing. Hey, Craig, what's up, man? Uh, you got a quick time call? Cool, man. I hit you about 20 minutes. It's 20 days later. Yeah, Craig's you, like, I you still want to talk? To, but then, you know, you get one shot going or <laughs> somebody comes by the house and it just becomes... Your 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 availability is so streaky because I hit you today, last yesterday or today? Yesterday. Yesterday, last minute. Mm-hmm. Can you come on today? You're like, yeah, no problem. And yeah. then, but I'll hit Craig like, hey, let's do something such and such. And he'll be like, cool, no doubt. If it's like a no month response. out or something, I'm like, ooh. You know, <laughs> Who had no Hollywood idea abused me to be like long term. <laughs> oh, no, I can't pick that far a day out you. and be like, yeah. Plus, like I said, some, everything happens real quick. So yeah. I might be like, uh, yeah. You live life on the go. I'm not going to stay in town if someone's like, let's go out. I think of I've town. been to your crib twice and you've had random people pop up. Both times. Yeah. Actually, actually, I'm going to say more than so. I've been to your house a lot before you moved. Yeah. When we were doing it, uh, hot nothing in the garage. And every day you had somebody come over. Uh, my house is, is the little, like, the hub. I know everybody that's on the brink of being successful. <laughs> yeah, or you do. That are successful, and I believe in everybody. And yeah. it's just like it's like a little think tank all the time. I've been surprised. I've been like, oh, uh, this is random. Yeah. This is the random appearances. Uh, yeah. It's, it's been, my garage has been... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking about all the people on Yo, TV. if you don't do that. a podcast called Craig's Garage, when you just uh, host and smoke in your garage and I'm about do to a do, show. Uh, Craig and them said. Craig and them said? Oh, yeah, that's great. It fits. That's great. Craig yeah, and them said? Craig and them That's said. great. It's coming up soon. That's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, you can do it in your garage, though. Uh, no, I'm going to actually do it in the studio space. Okay. You yeah. coming here? Uh, perhaps. Uh, talk to no, Cam about it. Cam, but uh, all right. So let me run down a hot. No- I mean, uh, a hot nothing. Let me run down C minus society. Daddy issue. I mean, no, I mean C minus society. <laughs> so C minus society. Uh, as you know, I'm a former reformed bum. You know what I mean? Is that what you living out your van bum? Or? Actually, that was after that. I felt like that's when I was on top of stuff. When I was actually homeless in the van, I was working harder. Were you talking about homeless or your actions in society were? No, my actions in society were great. Uh, I say C minus society because 
it goes back to when I was in middle school. I didn't respect school at all. But in middle school, I had got this uh, C minus on a test, right? And I was like, yes, woo, I passed. What? And my teacher was like, <laughs> oh, congrats, you're almost average. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> you happy about a C? Oh, man. Oh, not only was I happy about a C, I was hyped because that gave me a D minus in the class, which let me pass. So, is that a pass? D minus is a pass. I just oh. did it. And all I had to do back then, I just did enough so I can play sports. You know, you could play sports with a D minus? No, you had to have a 2.0 minimum to play sports. <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out what was the, the positive. The woo this. was that I could keep playing sports because okay. I got a D minus and let me pass the class. So it gave me enough to a 2.0. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So I just needed that. And I, I kept going. The C minus. You see my society. So just the happiness with <laughs> the C. Okay. Yeah. But also, I always thought school was dumb, and I only went to school to hang out with my friends and play sports. And I still think school is dumb. I think education is important, but I think school is dumb. See what I'm saying? Uh, I agree with you somewhat. It's uh, it's smart for what it does, and that's uh, raise workers. Yeah. Uh, it's not so big with uh, raising employees. Right. Yeah. I mean, I didn't want to be employed. Yeah, yeah, being bosses. Bosses. I didn't want to work for somebody forever. And you know then I mean? a lot of people I've met uh, that were bosses all had around a ninth grade education. And right. Quit. Right. <laughs> a lot of millionaires. I did. I, did it. I think I did three days of college. Period. And then I dipped, <laughs> and I was like, "Why am I doing this?" I was on set with Jim Carrey and Damon Wayans while I was going to, about to go to high school. Yeah. And they both were like, yeah, why? Pff, why? "Only ninth grade, then we are done." <laughs> I was like, oh, "What?" Mentally, I dropped out of high school. I mean, uh, school in fourth grade. I remember I tried really hard to get good grades, and I had uh, all B's and one C. I was like, "Fuck this, I'm done." And I was like, "I'm not trying anymore." And ever since then, it was just enough to play sports. Grades were too easy for me. Well, you're a smart dude, uh, Craig. It was. It, I got bored with it. You're a smart guy. And then I seen a lot. I always watch what people did on set, and then I go to school and be like. I'm not going to use any of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe arts and craft at school is going to be the best thing uh, I can take you to uh, the, the future. You're all right. So, all right. So, anyways, the podcast got started because I had to retrain my brain. Mm -hmm. So, I wouldn't be a bum. So, I wouldn't live a C average mindset, right? And I was really working hard to change how I did stuff, which I think... Uh, doing a good job. So the whole point was to make sure I can show people you can be whatever you want to be, get to where you want to go, but I wanted to show them in real time how, be, you know, I think even, Cam, we started this uh, a year ago, a year and a half ago, something like that. And I think I had just started maybe, um, maybe being, I was writing already with Bent, but it was like very small still. I was kind of still new. Uh, maybe something like that. But then I wanted to show people the progression over time. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to bring people on here so it's all about work ethic and all about uh, the mentality and you know, what goes into being great to standing out to doing something incredible, you know. And uh, I only want to bring on people who I'm like, man, they've had a, a crazy, incredible life and success after success after success, which, Craig, yeah. you've done. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been fun. You've had a crazy life. It, it's, been, it's been a crazy life and it's been fun. I got to get to... Uh, in life, I started off as a PA and got to move. The what was your first job? I, I was a PA. For? Uh, I was a PA. Oh, actually, I was a PA and a. Um, I was uh, my cousin's, um, the adult on set mm -hmm. for major pain. <laughs> okay. So um, that. <laughs> That was uh, it was fun. That was my first job. I didn't really get the industry. Mm -hmm. uh, got in trouble the first week. How, uh, how old were you? Eighteen. Okay. I just turned eighteen, and I was my cousin because my cousin's mom couldn't leave work mm -hmm. to go down. Which there. cousin are you talking about? Damien? My cousin Damien. He mm -hmm. was in the movie Major Pain, mm -hmm. and I was his guardian. Okay. So he is only two years younger than me, uh -huh. and it was like, all right, two years younger than me. Here's a bunch of money every week. <laughs> Uh, for being his guardian, and then here's a check for being a PA, Dope. and then here's per diem. Per Dope. diem is free money yeah. to eat, even though you don't spend that much money to eat. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, and then we were thrown in a new state. We were in Virginia. Dope. So it was, uh, it was crazy. How many weeks did you do over there? In Virginia? Yeah. Uh, we did about six to eight weeks. Yeah. Yeah, we were in the... And we were in Richmond for about three weeks, and then we were in, like, 
the like but I forgot the name of it. I don't want to be like the backwoods, but it was, uh, was, the backwoods? It was a college town. <laughs> uh-huh. And on the weekend, everybody went to the bowling alley to yeah. party. Yeah. Not just the bowl, but it was like the, the walkway was the dance floor. I saw, I saw those country spots, bro. You'd be like, oh, this is the hangout spot? It's like, well, I don't know if you ever done Walmart in the South. That was the mall. We'd be like, where's the mall? They'd be like, Walmart. We'd be we like, got we to find that mall, Mart. Yeah, Walmart in the South is a different thing. It's it's live. It's it's the it's like the place to be, which it's the I never thought of. Section, yeah, you go it's hang crazy. out in the bike section, just lean on a bike. That I I, ne- I never would have thought that that would have been uh, the place to be. It was the Walmart in the South. I was yeah. in Alabama, and he was like, "Hey, we are gonna go Walmart," and I was like, "Why are we gonna walk?" Hey, you gonna see when you find out, blue boy. Blue yeah. boy we blue went and boy. got our first BB guns <laughs> at Walmart yeah. in Virginia. We, we got BB guns and just yeah, you blew through that per diem check, didn't you? For sure, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Everything was a bet. <laughs> And there was a bunch of young kids, so everything was a bet. Yeah. It was uh, it was quite fun. Dope. All right. But uh, we uh, got to learn uh, that as a PA, you don't uh, you help with the movie, but you don't help with the movie. <laughs> uh, no, you're you do all the hard work. Yeah, we well, we all had different uh, jobs. I ended up uh, first we were setting background, and we thought that we just helped the movie be funny. So yeah. we had people just falling for no reason. And the director was like, cut, what the hell? The first time was a mistake. Why do people keep falling? <laughs> so then I got kicked out of that spot to uh, locking up the plantation field. Hilarious, which is bro. like out in like the... You got uh, demoted? Yeah, I got booted quick. And I was like locking up the ghosts of slaves because there was <laughs> nothing out there. Just pitch black and uh, corn stalks Ugh. or cotton, whatever. Were you scared is. at all? Hell yeah, because they just gave me a chair and a walkie. I'd have been terrified. And what was funny is my walkie went dead, so they came out there... Like they were surprised I was still out there. It was like hours, <laughs> hours later. Like, hey, uh, you didn't hear us call you? I was like, no. They was like, oh, your battery's dead. We wrapped about two hours ago. We've been looking for you. I was like, oh, Craig, okay. it would have been a skeleton out there. They found you. Uh, all right. So, well, explain for the people what the PA is, if you want. That's a production assistant. Yeah. It's uh, it's usually the much... ground floor job in the business in Hollywood. If you come out here, yes, it's the little kid in the neighborhood that you send to do everything. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, I've seen PAs tar pavement. I've seen I've seen PAs <laughs> reach on on a, on a on a ladder hanging up stuff. They they talk to you like you have so much power. They'll be like, "All right, stop everybody from walking down that street," <laughs> and you're like, "What?" <laughs> yeah. What if they say no? Stop them. Uh, okay. So Craig's tackling people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and then I mean, outside of the coffee runs, that's probably, probably the easiest thing. Actually, coffee runs are trash to go nah, come back nah. with twelve coffees all balanced on top of each other. It's the waiting and signing everybody in, uh, signing everybody out. You're the first one to get to work and the last one to leave. And no one claps for you, do they? No one claps for the PA. The stars there and not the trailer for two hours a day. Nobody remembers your name. No. And then the star gets, all right, such and such is rap today. Ah! Meanwhile, go clean up his shit out the trailer. Yeah, they come in last and they leave first. Yeah, no one yells at them. And complain the most. <laughs> That's why they're stars. That's why they're stars. <laughs> yeah. I always hate it. I was like, yo, Casting worked 15 hours a day and this bastard gets a clap. Uh, it's funny. A lot of people that are, are big in Hollywood started off as PAs. Yeah. It's like the initial job. You get to see what everybody does, how much everybody gets paid. Right, you do. And then make a choice somewhat <laughs> <laughs> of where you want to be. Yeah. When you're like, so uh, at what point did you start writing? Uh, I was writing at like 10, 11 years old. What were you working on? Uh, I wasn't working on anything. I would go to the comedy store okay. or improv with my uncle. Mm-hmm. And uh, after sets, they would tell me before, like, if you hear anything that anybody says and you think there's something funny in there or something, write it down. Mm-hmm. And then afterwards, when we de- we used to all sit down and eat, and he afterwards. doesn't mean anybody, as in whoever goes up. He means his uncle and family. No, anybody that went up. Oh yeah, anybody. I was cocky. Anybody <laughs> that went up, it didn't matter who it was. <laughs> if you have something funny for them and you oh, think it for might them, work, I got you. Yeah, you're uh, giving out tags. Tags. Got yeah. you. I was learning. That's the, how I learned is with gotcha. tags. And then it, uh, I didn't want somebody assume you were stealing jokes. You're giving them tags. No, I was giving the them tags because afterwards we sit down and eat, and they'd be like, "Yeah, so right." Everybody have their back then. You'd have your uh, napkins with mm-hmm. all the notes. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, and then this say like this, and then or hold it, and then yeah. 
So we do that, and then uh, I start punching up scripts at like 15. Oh, what show were you on? Uh, that was on oh, Wayne's movie. Brothers. Wayne's Brothers? That nice. was Wayne's Brothers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd come after school. Well, before that, in Living Color, I would go and sit in the writer's room. Mm-hmm. That's, I do my homework in the writer's rooms. <laughs> of, and of and Living Color. Of and Living Color. Had to be crazy. Well, Kenya was real, he was real lenient with, with me because mm-hmm. uh, I didn't ask dumb questions when mm-hmm. I wasn't like too uh, distracting. Yeah. But he used to let me sit in the network meetings. Uh, he let, let me sit in with the music wow. uh, people. That's why a lot of the music was so young. Mm-hmm. Because they had a 14-year-old sitting in there saying, hey, that's dope, <laughs> man. And it's like, oh. that's, what, that's, that's what's hot. And there that's what to be like, look, that's the audience. Yeah. That's where it starts. Right, right. But, uh, yeah, then when So Keenan was grooming you from a long time. He's giving me access. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of people that had access and just went in and fell asleep mm. or just enjoyed the snacks. They didn't make the most of the opportunity that was yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They didn't pick up on it. Yeah. Who was in a writer's room back then? Oh man, it was uh, Paul Mooney. Mm-hmm. Uh, Crazy. The the what was the guy's name? Was uh, Leo Lawrence around? The, there's Phil Bowman. There was uh, the the brothers. The uh, they're both comics. The, the oh, uh, guy and Joe or no? No, no. It oh, was, okay. They were. Uh, I want to say Smeagol. No. Schmeagle. Uh, oh, okay. Oh. Anyway, it was, they, they're really, really, really funny uh, brothers. Okay. Uh, then uh, the creator of Friends was in there. Oh, okay. Uh, Larry Wilmore was in there. Okay, great. Uh, Michael Anthony Snowden. Okay, uh, okay. It was a, a big room. They all went on. Uh, yeah, they're great things. Yeah, <laughs> they're all they're all executive showrunners <laughs> in other places. But I would just go and kick it in their rooms and do homework. That's crazy. It wasn't like a, like I said. I would, I'd really just be quiet, yeah, and listen, and say something when everybody else was saying something. <laughs> I learned for a minute, and then I started jumping in in different spots. Were you funny? Uh, I always said I had a, a great point of view. Okay. Uh, some people try to do like a word joke, but I'll bring a moment that is real to a scene where yeah. people will laugh. No. Yeah. Yeah, man, I could ask you about In Living Color all day, but yeah. it's not about that, even though I'm a fanboy. In Living Color is what, st- I think I was five when Living Color came out, so it was 1990, correct? Yeah. When it aired. So I was five, so when I was young, my parents used to argue all the time. They were a young couple with two kids, <laughs> they were in their 20s, they argued constantly. And then the only time- In their 20s with two? Ooh, yeah, yeah, they were in the 20s with two, and it wasn't like, you know, they were making a lot of money, they were broke in their 20s at two, you know? But uh, in Living Color, when that, that was one of those things that came when it came on. We all watched, even though I had no business watching that. But we all laughed together as a family. So then comedy, I was like, comedy makes people happy. It stops my parents from arguing. So ever since then, I was, I'm going to be funny. So Living Color was the first reason I've ever tried to be funny. It's just trying to make my parents laugh, you know. And then, uh, so yeah, that was my, it was, and then like, I think Keen and Kel came later. And all I was that. like. All that, but more so Keen and Kel, because I saw two young black dudes doing that. Because, you know, Keen, like, all that was ensemble. Mm-hmm. But when I saw them have their own show, and I was like, yeah, I wanted to do In Living Color and Keen and Kel. That was, like, my connection of comedy. That was the young the young version of that was it. That was we find funny. Exactly. That was everything I wanted to do. It was, it was, like, between those two cats. And I was like, so when I was going to school, that was all I was trying, which is why I didn't care about school, why I was yeah. getting in trouble. Because I was just trying to be like, yeah, what did, uh, who we don't play? I was smacking everybody with a sock and a sock. <laughs> 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 Doing all that good stuff. All right, Craig. So that, let me ask you some questions. That is how we all learn oh, how yeah. to be funny. First, we emulate <laughs> What we think oh, is funny. Oh, yeah. And then we grow from there. Oh, no, yeah. Getting beat up. Me and me and my brother had whole sock wars, bro. It was it was so much fun. Dumb. Yeah, sneaking around, waiting for somebody to say something. To be like, I don't think so. <laughs> Bat. Right. Bat. All right, let's do this. All right, so Craig. Yeah. All right, where do you see yourself in 5, 10, and 20 years from now? Um, In five years, I'll be working on a comedy special. Okay. What kind of, uh, what kind of comedy special? Stand-up, stand-up comedy special. For you? For me. Yeah? Uh, yeah. You heard it here first, folks. Uh, Craig Wayne's five years from now. What's the date? What year are we in? 2021? 2026. What's it going to be called? Uh, not sure yet. Not, not sure yet. Coming not sure. out. 2026. <laughs> huh? 
It's a great title. <laughs> Not sure yet. 2026, Craig Wayne's comedy yeah. special. Uh, 10 years. I just broke the internet right now. Oh, for sure. It's going to be hilarious. It's going to be uh, thought-provoking. It's Let's gonna do different. it. different. It's going to grow comedy. Love it. All right, 10 years. 10 years, I'll have my um, foundation up and going okay. uh, for children uh, with PTSD from inner city neighborhoods. Man, it's not uh, talked about enough, Craig. It's not, it's not talked about at all for the most part. Yeah. There's no classes. There's no programs for it. And it's uh, there. Uh, you go to other countries, and we send a lot of money after we uh, send soldiers over there and children see murder, death, mm -hmm. uh, famine. But kids here see it every day. Man, that's and, one thing. Uh, Craig, that's the most... No, I don't think anyone I've ever heard, maybe only another one other person I think I've ever heard talked about the trauma as PTSD from growing up. Man, 98% of our people in jail are because they're taught how to live like a kid in a war-torn country. All right. But the rest of the world, I mean, the rest of the U.S., we don't function like that. So right. when we see it, it's like, oh, you need to be in jail when it's yeah. like, no, nah, you need your situation correct. Right. You grew up in the hood. Yes. You grew up in some shit. Were you in the projects? I was in the projects. Uh, I was born in the projects uh, until I was in junior high. In, in New I, York, right? In New York, Manhattan. Mm -hmm. In Manhattan. Fulton Projects, yeah. Uh -huh. But my mom, was, we was in the Bronx, we was in Queens, we was in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. uh, my mom was in and out of foster care when I was little. So Your uh, mom was? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, being uh, Having a child at 16 and a half yeah. in a Jehovah's Witness household. Yeah. Is a little strenuous. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little strenuous. <laughs> to say the least, I bet. <laughs> uh, yeah, so. Uh, yeah, yeah. Then, uh, yeah, around junior high, I moved out here. Mm -hmm. My mom moved out here too, but I moved in with my, uh, my uncle Sean and Marlon. Mm. They lived in the same apartment building. I okay. just would go there. We'll go to the show after school. Yeah. Then go home, write with them. Then Sean would go do stand up. I go with him to all mm -hmm. the stand up spots, and then uh, yeah, I show up to school the next day in a Range Rover or a Land Cruiser <laughs> that wasn't mine. All right, all right. <laughs> and uh, not have my homework. But Did have you go to some kind of, of fancy private school? No, I went to Fairfax. Oh yeah, Fairfax right High. down there. Yeah. yeah. I was, man, I felt like I was super popular. <laughs> you were. All the new comic, like well, I say new comics, but like Chris Tucker was one of the new comics, yeah. and. Uh, Chris Spencer. Yeah, we're talking uh, mid nineties. Yeah. yeah, they'd see me, early nineties. Yeah, they'd see me walking up Melrose and be like, "What up, nephew?" Because <laughs> what, Craig, uh, Wayne's brother's from ninety six. Yes. Yeah. But uh, Living Color was 90, 90 to ninety five, five, four. Well, with the Wayne's regime, it was ninety to ninety two. They left after season three. Yes. Yeah, I know way too much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's at uh, season three. And then. Uh, yeah, then uh, Wayne's brother started shortly after that. Yeah. And I was working on that and the Keenan show. Oh, the, the uh, talk show. Talk show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was fun. I bet it was. Uh, it was fun for me, but for the average person, it would have been like, man, because I would go work at uh, Wayne's brother's early in the morning to mm -hmm. lunch. Then at my lunch, I would go over to the night, uh, the night uh, show. Yeah. And work for like two hours before having to go back to Wayne's brother's, That's crazy. finish the day off before going yeah. back to Keenan for the taping. How many hours do you feel like you guys put in on the off days of like being at the office with Wayne's Brothers? Did you guys still work every day? That's the thing. There is no off day. As right. a comedian, you know there's I know. no off day either. Yeah. It's like uh, anything, this is for the people. anything could spawn a, a thought, and that thought gets a call right away. It's <laughs> 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 something in it. Let's, let's get it. Yeah, let's yeah. get it. Yeah. Yeah. So... You know, I want people to understand the idea of how much work it is to do whatever you want to do to a level of success. You know, like, uh, you know a lot of my story and just the hours that you put in, you know. But um, I think that people don't, you know, one of my things is, like, even people want to start a business, we make so many excuses, right? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, I don't want people to take for granted that you had some famous uncles, like you didn't work hard, right? Because yeah. PA and sucks. Yeah. And them cats made you start at the bottom bottom. Well, <laughs> right. every every position sucks, but if you enjoy it, it is it is what it is. Yeah. Like for people that produce and uh, run their own shows, 
not only do they have to live the life of a superstar, meaning going out to parties, waking up early, working out, mm -hmm. but then they got to sit there the entire day, for the most part, like a writer or mm -hmm. a showrunner and make sure that their show is going the way they want it to go. Right. And uh, it's a lot of work. That's why I didn't want to be on TV for the longest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, nah, I get to be fat when I want to be fat. <laughs> I get to be ungroomed when I don't. Yeah. Uh, it's like I get to live a regular life unless somebody reads the 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 titles. Yeah, and then <laughs> but then the people I mean people knew you though. Uh, yeah, well, that's because I was, I think I was L.A. popular, mm -hmm. just because I was everywhere in the city all the time, right. and in New York and Miami, I was yeah. everywhere. <laughs> I like how you're tri-coastal. Yeah, man, it was, it was fun. Like, other people just went and did the same thing every weekend. Me and my cousin were like, let's go somewhere else. Yeah. Let's travel. Yeah. Let's see some of these other cities. Yeah. And you're a big world traveler. Uh I'm getting there. Yeah? Uh, yeah. I know you've done Brazil there. often. Done Brazil f four times, five five times in two years. Different places or same city? Uh, you got like cities. a whole other family Sao down Pop there? Nah, nah, <laughs> nah. It's, it's a different, I, I'm not that accustomed to the culture uh, yet to make that type of decision. Well, sometimes it doesn't take much to make a child down yeah, there. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, well, for me, it does. Like, <laughs> I, I, I give my daughter and my son the same talk that I give myself, which uh -huh. is you have to respect yourself and value yourself to a certain point mm -hmm. and know what your limit is. Yeah. I can't go in and do that in Brazil with someone that I don't know if they're going to be able to take care of my kids if I'm going Because that's tomorrow. what people don't think about when a one-night smash is. You're like, <laughs> you might have a kid. I, yeah, now it's like, even if it's a one-night smash, I'm like, oh, well, at least your floors are clean. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no roaches crawling over there. Yeah, you got some food in the fridge. You don't want to come home six months later, see your baby, and there's roaches all over him. <laughs> hey, hey, got it. Uh, all right, where do you see yourself in 20 years? Uh, 20 years I'll have a film studio Ooh. to some degree. Okay. Uh, it's always been a goal of mine to unite my friends to make projects. So, uh, And I have enough friends in cool spots right now that if they came together, it could be all right. Uh, yeah, to say the least. Did you work on the other underground? Uh, yeah, I worked on the underground and the crea creating process. Yeah. And then after the first season, me and I, Damien, went off to do other stuff. Yeah. Oh, you guys didn't stay for the second season? No. It was me, Damien, uh, Damon, Big Damon, Little mm -hmm. Damon. And uh, I remember Vinny being a part of that. Yeah, he was on the cast. He was I on mean, the cast. The original writers of the sketches gotcha. and stuff. We I did. love the underground, man. I remember Ari Spears was on there. Yeah. Uh, Mikey Day. Mikey Day, who's on right. SNL right now. Yeah. Yeah, um, man. All the, a lot of uh, creative dancers that um, are choreographing a lot of... The new dance. So uh, they were on there and stuff. Yeah, I've been thinking about there. that. Yeah. All right. So what's uh? Do you feel like you're giving your very best effort in your career, and uh, what's the leap to to get there, and what's stopping you? I give. Uh, I don't think I'm giving very big effort to my career. Mm -hmm. uh, my thing over the last. I have fun working, but uh, my priority is my kids. Mm -hmm. So I. Anything that could be worked around what I have to do with my kids, yeah, cool. Right. If not, I'll figure out another way. I'll so, always find out how to make money. Yeah. So you're not pressed like, I got to do this, sacrifice everything? Uh, like eight years ago, I stopped with that. I was giving myself anxiety. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, you know what? I know... I used to do a countdown every time I got a big check mm -hmm. of how long it's going to be before <laughs> this is gone. And it would traumatize me every night. Ah, <laughs> and I was like, you know what, why am I doing that? Because yeah, every yeah, time yeah. I think it's something going to be wrong, I just tighten that belt and, and no go doubt. get it done. Yeah. Yeah. So. I just hit that part for the first time. The stressing. Uh, well, because I got a big check and I was like, yeah, how you not fuck this up? I was like, don't. Because, you know, you want to go do stuff finally that you can't do. Yeah. And like, I think the biggest thing I did, it was only like 500 bucks, but I spent, I took my uh, mom, mother-in-law, and wife to like an expensive dinner for Mother's Day, mm -hmm. right? And then 
Because they were like, yo, it's cost this much. I was like, we're only going to do this one time. <laughs> you let the bill go past everybody. I'm like, how do they know how much it costs? Oh, I got to show them. What the, <laughs> but they knew once they got there. You know, my family, bro, no one grew up like, like that. hold on. What's the, what's the tip on this? Yeah, my mother-in-law, she only sees She was like, we can get a steak at Applebee's. <laughs> and I was like, it's not going to be the same type of steak. We were at Larson's, you know. Okay. And I tried to take them to Mastro's, but it was crazy. Yeah. So we went to Larson's, which uh, all those places are out of my out of my budget just until a month ago, right? <laughs> so then I was like, oh, let me go do something nice. Let me go do something that's crazy. But then I go, the people, of course, like, you know, Bentley, Kyle Evans, of course, and like some of these other cats that I hang out with, they can do that every day. You know what I mean? They they want to go like, oh, let's go hit here, let's go here. I'm like, I can't hang with y'all. I'll be poor. Well, it's a lot different when you're going by yourself to those spots. Like, True oh that. yeah, Mastro's is cool by yourself. Yeah. But when it's six of y'all, it's like, oh, damn. What? <laughs> nah. And yeah, I was tripping over uh what was that one little sandwich spot? Uh Jerry's Deli. Oh yeah, yeah. And that was way too expensive over there. Yeah. The first couple times I went there, I asked for extra bread on the side and made extra sandwiches. <laughs> Cause they give you so they much. They give you so meat. much meat, they do. <laughs> and it's so much. I was like, nah, nah, we gonna split this and get an order of fries. <laughs> Bro, I was always like, I can't afford this. But so then I was like, yo, how do you budget? Because who knows when the next one comes? You got gigs lined up, but things fall through all the time. And then when they say an amount, it sounds like, oh, man. Oh, yeah. And then they're, they're like, okay, but we're going to split it up over this much time. Right. At first, you're like, man, we're going to get I'm get how much for that? Right. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. Give me that. And then they're like, well, we're going to split it up over 20 weeks. And you're like... <laughs> All right, mm-hmm. over 20 weeks, and then you're like, yeah, but then we're going to hit you with this tax sale this time, and then you're like, oh. Uh, right. Yeah, you're like, oh. the uh. taxes, man. You'd be like, I'm making what? And then you go like, I made what? <laughs> yeah. I used to look at people's checks and be like, wait, how did he blow that? And yeah. then I start, as I got older, I start doing all the math and being like, oh, yeah, I, I should have known that was going to happen. Right. Yeah, yeah. What age did you uh, smart up on your money? Uh, About... Six years ago, honestly. <laughs> well, like I said, I had I had children young, right. so children are the biggest investments <laughs> that are out of your control. Yeah, yeah. So those are uh, they've all turned out to be good investments. Good, good. Uh, no money, no financial return, but yeah. a lot of love return. <laughs> they haven't started balling yet. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, it, it took me a long time because my family, even though they made money, when they made money. They were the first to make it. Mm-hmm. So they had to find out how to lose it and regain it and what to trust and what not to trust. Yeah. But while they're doing that, I was making money. Yeah. So it took me in later for me to come up with it myself because yeah, I was yeah. hearing a lot of the things they didn't like mm-hmm. and don't do this. <laughs> and it might just happen because I caught them on a bad stock day. They were yeah, like, yeah. don't ever invest in no damn stocks. <laughs> <laughs> as, as a kid, you're like, oh, yeah, All right. I'll never invest in stocks. All right. My parents used to like, don't get no credit cards. Then I was like, oh, y'all just didn't know how to do them. I said, it's, it's, they weren't, they're not awful if you if you have discipline. Yes. But if you have no discipline, then they're awful. I got that. Or don't, don't, know how they work. don't open restaurants. Don't. Uh, <laughs> I got a whole. Was there a bunch Wayne's restaurant don't. out there somewhere? Uh, there were investments in restaurants throughout periods of times, but it wasn't until later that I was like, "Oh no, restaurants could be a good investment." They could be, but they say they're like member. the biggest. I think uh, businesses that go under. Yes, are restaurants. But early, um, getting in early is always a good thing. So, do you feel like you're going to start putting? Uh, I want to say more effort into your career, but you've you've. You've had your own show. You had Second Generation Wayne's. Yes. You've done a, you've, the, the amount of movies you guys have written from the scary movies, A Haunted House. Like, you guys have done, you've done, a, you've done, a, you've, your resume is crazy. Yeah. Uh, well, now, uh, I, I say this all the time now is this is the first time I'm going to get to be Craig. Yeah. Well, and actually, I didn't even count uh, um, um, uh, Damon's show. Um, my Mary, wife and kids. Me and my wife and kids. Well, Not even counting that because that's yeah. a classic. So you got two classics under your belt, three classic TV shows from *A Living Color* to *Wayne's Brothers* to. Uh, I'll take two. I was I was just a kid on the set. That counts, bro. Did you add anything? A living color. That counts. You're a part of it. It goes on a resume. <laughs> and the classic movies. Were you part of *Blank Man* at all? Uh, no. No. Uh, just no. *Major Pain*. Uh, *Major Pain*. Um, 
little man. I'm gonna get you sucker. Chicks. I mean, uh, I was only eight years old when I. No, 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 no. I'm gonna get you sucker. Don't drink it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, that was one of my first punch up gigs. Come on, I man. Did, uh, that's on the resume. That's on the resume. That's on the resume. <laughs> <laughs> We had a, we did we've done so many shows that haven't gotten on TV I as bet. well. So many pilots yeah. that I have never put on my resume. Yeah, but I'm like maybe I should. And Damon, Damon, and no one knows the show didn't it didn't live long. But Damon and David Allen Greer had a TV show that was hilarious when Damon was a cop. It was called Damon. It was just called Damon. Yeah. yeah, that was when uh, he was an undercover cop. Yes, and then so they would do a whole bunch of characters. And David Ellie Greer was like a security guard trying to be a cop or something yeah. like that. Bro, that show was great. Uh, and Erica Badu did the um, song for the show. Crazy. And uh, it was a. Uh, Cause this is Damon's show. <laughs> it's not your show. It's the Damon. And I was like, oh, wow, Erica Badu did this. <laughs> Yo, what happened with that show? Why didn't that show last? It was hilarious. Um, With most shows, it's all up to the network and what lead-ins they need and mm -hmm. what are their other successful shows that they could pair you with and are they going to put you on your own night if you could hold it. Mm -hmm. It's so much... It's not just if the show's good. Right. Which which we've seen. We've seen good shows get canceled. We've seen good shows with good numbers get canceled. We've seen bad shows stay on for too long. We've seen bad <laughs> shows stay on for long enough. I'm glad. How is this show on season six? <laughs> well, sometimes they'll be on season four and be like, well, we have to do another season just to make the hundred right. and make it worthwhile. Right. And then sometimes it catches another little breath of life. All right. Like, oh, let's do two more. Anybody want to take a pay cut? I, I figure like. sometimes it's just a, a like a down period of shows, and then like you, your trash show might be the best show out right now, and it's just like you caught the red nights, and then you don't have to go against uh, American Idol and something like that. It's also that that's one of them, but there's also uh, there's people that are on the marketing side that get comfortable with. Well, I have all my old marketing decks with these shows. Mm -hmm. We need shows like these so I could squeeze them into the right. Uh, Mark, well, the commercials. Mm -hmm. God damn. They're like, bastards. they love these commercials with older women in the lead. We need a show. <laughs> right. With, with older yeah. women. I don't know. It makes sense. It makes, it makes sense. So, what's, what's the leap look like? What is there that you haven't done career wise, work ethic wise, that you go, this is going to take me to the next level? I never focused on me and I never wanted to be a star. So mm -hmm. now I'm like, oh, I can focus on me and I already know the blueprint on getting there. Okay. So, I get to, for the first time, I'm a parent, but they're grown now. Yeah. So now I can focus on just what I need to do. Yeah, because your youngest one is 16. 17. 17. Yes. Uh, he loves college, pro D1 college bound. He's going to be D1 college bound. Uh, you had another one that was D1 college bound, correct? Well, then turned into a rapper. Now <laughs> he's uh, he's he's directing now. Okay. He uh, has a website called Youth Culture Dope. where he's uh, going around. And uh, anybody that's promoting positivity to the youth he's no. doing interviews on them. were you upset that he didn't stay in college to play i was just upset that he didn't take advantage of the college education mm -hmm. i don't my only dream is for them to have a good time as long as they can right before the reality of life sets in it doesn't take long it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't it comes in all. quick and it comes in hard as fuck and i tell him <laughs> even if you go pro that's so you can have fun because the reality of life sets in when you're not a pro no more right as you get to watch on tv over and over again yeah, yeah. they're broke where's uh there. where's this one look like he's going the youngest one uh, we don't uh, we don't know yet. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll have to discuss it. And he has a whole nother year or possibly two years to play. I might let he's, him go he's to a, a prep junior, school. Yeah. He's a junior. <laughs> he would have been doing good last year, too. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just the wrong fit at the mm -hmm. school. Sometimes you get somebody that's like... If you guys want to see, uh, follow Craig's Instagram at, at Craig Wins. And, and I post my kids. Post his kid <laughs> dunking <laughs> all over kids. Yeah. It doesn't look fair, bro. I don't. I feel like I was like, oh, he doesn't play with regular like the same old kids. A lot of like, people were thinking that, and then you go to the game, you're like, wait, that kid's six nine on that team. That yeah. kid's six ten. How old is your kid? It's just unfortunate. I mean, how that tall the is guards he? run down first and have to catch <laughs> catch the D's in their <laughs> face. <laughs> he, he's six seven and a half, right bro. Now. He's dunking on everybody. Yeah, he's shooting at three too. Yeah, uh, he's been. 
He, we watched the tapes, and then he's like, Dad, I don't want to just be known as a dunker. Now everybody's just sitting in the lane. It's like, right. All right, well, let's try this now. Mm -hmm. You could do it. He's yeah. like, all right. Yeah. Were you big hooping growing up? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I think I could have went. Yeah? I think I could have went. Yeah. <laughs> I think I could have went. I told my son this. I said, the reason, I, tell, I tell him when people fall out of playing basketball, there's the kid that was really good when he was young. Right, right. And then he gets to high school. Now everybody was really good when they were <laughs> right, young. Right. He falls off. Then there's the guy that gets the girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. I was the guy that would only play on the court. And afterwards, I'd be like, what do you mean practice? Yeah. I practiced all that shit in the game. <laughs> <laughs> It'll go. <laughs> and yeah. then they were working out. Yeah. And I'd be like, I'm not working out. I'm going to set. Yeah. Then I had set. Yeah. And that, that was uh, between uh, three-way calls all night and set. You yeah. just didn't have the... I didn't have that drive. Yeah. I get a lot of the people go pros because they were never popular. All they had was basketball <laughs> or football. They didn't have nothing else. They all had right. bad acne. All they had was the weight. <laughs> That's the drive you need. I was like, nah. The the lady on set makes sure my skin's nice. <laughs> she gives me sneaks me little packets. To so you're saying that only losers go pro? It takes a lot of self hate. <laughs> To push yourself uh -oh. above that I line. I don't think that's of, the truth, Greg. Man, whenever I run and I get tired, I'm like, oh, I gotta stop. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to die. They're like, you don't no, push that? yourself till there's nothing left. Because like, I had a horrible childhood. <laughs> I was a loser of the losers. You remember the football players and basketball players? <laughs> their sweatpants didn't fit. <laughs> they uh, they were always shy because they'd have two lunches <laughs> trying to eat in the corner, or they weren't quite popular until the football coach seen them and was like, "I could use you, son." Okay, <laughs> like, that sounds like uh, something out of a movie. It's like you that just six five. What was the loner. movie with uh, what's her name and the blind side? It's that was him. <laughs> Big old 6'10 dude sitting in the corner eating peanut butter sandwiches by himself. He just and the coach is like, you. And he's like, you Who, talking me? to me? Yeah. <laughs> it's it was... never the popular kid with all the girls around him in the middle of the courtyard. They're like, you. I feel like the, the popular kid is popular because of the sports. No, it's usually the popular kid is popular because his parents were rich. Okay. They were popular True. in the community. Okay. and uh, Or else it's the kid... Uh, whose parent is the boss at work. Okay. <laughs> is that, is, or the good-looking guy's son. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. But not because they're... Yeah, that's hilarious. The fact that everybody goes pro or losers is... It's a high me. percentage. Yeah. It, well, even, well, now it's different a little bit because now you have a lot of pro kid sons that yeah. go pro. Right. Now. Yeah. Right, right. So they invest in their kids a lot right. different. Yeah, that's hilarious. Uh, you ever thought about quitting a business? No. Never? Never. Not for a second? Not at and all. And you go like, I'm sick of this shit. I always say that. <laughs> I always say that. It's frustrating. But then I look at other people at work and be like, mm -hmm. no, I'm not going to that. I don't want to write names on cups and mispronounce <laughs> them for them to come get their orders. No, <laughs> no disrespect. Now, you know they do it on purpose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Chase. It's Chaz. Chaz. You, you saw. Know. You saw clearly. I I told you how to spell. It. I said C H A Z. <laughs> right. Chase. Do you want this macchiato or not? You can say macchiato, but you can't say my name. <laughs> no. Uh, why Why do you feel like you haven't quit? What's the thing that you go? Oh. Uh, like I said, I, I have fun. I, I don't come home and complain about my actual work. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you might be the asshole, but then I find a fun way to d deal with yeah. assholes. It's wife and kids in real life. Right. <laughs> it's fine. You know, I, I told people on Daddy Issues um, how much of you, when I watched that show and after meeting you and talking to you, how much Craig is in that show. There's a lot of Craig in that show. I almost, Your DNA is in that show. I literally, during the quarantine, almost converted my house <laughs> into a, a show like Wife and Kids. Yeah. I was going to make my son work in the kitchen mm -hmm. as a job. So You I was, talked about that, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. I was literally going to do that. And I was like, nah, <laughs> I'm not going to give that to IG. Why not? It's free. 
That's okay, though. I can just put that in other stuff later. You can put some free stuff out there for the people. I do. I talk to people. I, I do. Uh, daddy I issues. do daddy issues. <laughs> uh, I, go, I go out to the community. Speak. You're to not people. active enough online. Neither am I. But you're not active enough online. That's because. Well, that's because I, I have a. I write probably about three movies a year and create about four to five pilots. Uh, pilots. Mm-hmm. Uh, it takes a lot of time. Takes Everybody's of time. not Tyler Perry. Right. Uh, n- no disrespect. Right. I'll keep hitting with the no disrespect. <laughs> but uh, sometimes it takes a little bit of time. And you have so many on the shelf that sometimes you finish a project and you go get back on those yeah. while you're creating more. So right. literally, I'm trying to bring out other content that mm-hmm. I don't want to take away from it to... I get it to address. But if you got so much content, Craig, you got something to spare, bro. Never that. What do you mean? Uh, never that. You can um, always make more. Kind of, but kind of not. You could always make more, but they're not always buying more. So That's sometimes true. you have an idea that you're like, oh, this catch some heat on online. And then you're like, well, you know what? If it catches heat online, I might as well develop it all the way. <laughs> And do it as a show and catch some heat <laughs> with some money. If you do that all the time, though, you'll never sell anything or you'll never bring anything online. You'll just be hoarding it. You're a hoarder. No, I'll just You're keep, an IP hoarder. Well, I'll show them in the movies and I'll show them on the television shows. In, and a, then in I different wanna, ways. Yes. And then some of the stuff I create, I want, I create for other people. All right. So I don't want to, I think some of these guys do their writing a disjustice by being the characters themselves online Mm -hmm. where it's like i get where you're going with that but maybe if this guy played it that shit would have been hilarious right but yeah you're such a producer craig you can't help it i can't (laughs) i can't (laughs) i'm like you gotta put the production together i've tried to write stuff that i wrote for marlon for other people and i've watched it and been like oh (sighs) yeah nah i still did what i said yeah like you're such a producer bro have you had to fire one of your friends yet uh, I did. I've fought for so many of my friends' jobs through I've the had years. Fight. I had to fire a friend. Uh, <laughs> I had to tell a friend he was fired, but I didn't fire him. Yeah. Yeah. Because he didn't believe it, and he asked me again. And I was like, you know what I mean? I call him. He was like, yo, you serious? They serious. what I do? They for real. <laughs> for real, for real. I was like, what they say? It was like, nigga, don't come in. And I was like, what? <laughs> Ever. I was like, yeah. Yeah, it kind of sounds uh, We'll send you your check. <laughs> <laughs> You're a big, um, I feel like, so I, I think when I first met you, now let's go to when we were shooting in the garage. I've seen you go through uh, these phases of health and fitness, mm-hmm. right? I've seen you be the vegan, Craig the vegan. Yes. Uh, I've seen you be, oh, drunk Craig was especially I was special. a vegan and I was drunk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> drunk vegan <laughs> Craig. Uh which I'm sure alcohol is vegan, right? I don't think that's a problem. I did have no. Nah, that one was straight. That was that might have had pork fat in there. <laughs> yeah, because the thing about drunk Craig is I've only seen him once, and he was wearing a Deadpool costume pajamas, and I was like, "Hey, what's happening here? Why is Craig turned up?" Because usually he's so calm and quiet. It's and like he was an not. extreme acting class. Because <laughs> I was like, "Ah, oh, this is terrifying. I don't know who this guy is." Usually, when we get drunk, we do bits. We do yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was terrifying to see you as that. But the Deadpool pajamas, I was like, what is going on? Uh, I think we went, we were driving somewhere, might have passed a Target and went in there and just was like. And this wasn't at night. I want, This was like it, this, 10 in the morning. <laughs> it wasn't like it was, I was at Craig's crib turning up at 9. I'm very spontaneous. I do not like set. So Craig like, was drunk but, in the morning. I was drunk from the night before, <laughs> but I just was like, you know what? I'm not going to have a hangover. I might as well just, I just stay gotta keep drunk. Going. Yeah. I walked in fun. to Craig, and uh, 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 I was like, <laughs> we're doing a podcast. Oh, we doing it. Oh, for sure. We doing it. <laughs> All uh, right. I tried it. Uh, drunk Craig doesn't have the filter. Drunk Craig is mad fun. I just I wasn't ready for Drunk Craig. Yeah. He's not, he wasn't mean. He was a nice guy. No, he's mean. I didn't see the it mean drunk Craig. Be, no, not not like fighting mean. Oh yeah, but if it's like mean humor going around, oh for sure. Well, hey, that just happens. It happens. That just <laughs> I've seen Marlon go into people. Oh, for hours. Yeah. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. It's like, oh, this is what we going to do. Let's get ready. Let's get comfortable. There's been times it's like, oh, is these still jokes? <laughs> You're like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was, we go in on everything. Yeah. From clothes to hair to 
if it's going to be one of them days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you know it's getting bad when it starts going into, well, how much you make? And it's like, <laughs> oh, damn, one of them jokes hit. Uh, that's, <laughs> when that's when you got it. That's when it gets first when you got to bring out the wallet. Oh, for sure. I love anybody I'm going up against. So as soon as it gets to money, I'm like, okay, yeah, I, win. I got that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got that round. Yeah. I'm comfortable, though, so right. you ain't going to make me feel bad. <laughs> All right, let me ask you a question. Here we go. You're on your deathbed, mm-hmm. all right? Uh, you already talked to your family. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've accomplished everything on your list from the 5 to 10 and the 20 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What are three pieces of advice you tell people? A reporter came in. He's like, Craig, Craig. He's like, yeah, can I help you? And he's like, before you die, give the world three pieces of advice to leave us with. Every smart thought is someone's dumb idea. Don't Every doubt yourself. Every smart thought if someone's dumb idea don't doubt yourself that's dope that's one thing i tell them um i tell them uh i hope people unpack that that's super dope know everything then know more don't and um if you're not enjoying it don't do it absolutely dope i like how you even had to think about those for very long a little bit. No. Yeah. I've seen cats on here. We can't see people like, ah, ah. Because those are, those are resettable things. I mm-hmm. don't, I, I've never wanted anybody or any of my kids to get set into being one thing mm-hmm. and get frustrated and not completing that one idea that they had. Right. It's like, that's cool. You want to do that, but what else you want to do? Right. Do that too. Yeah. You think about writing a Craig f- philosophy book? Nah. I'm too weird. You're very philosophical. I'm too weird. What do you, I don't think you are. I'm all over the place. So I might say something uh, <laughs> that's really thought provoking, <laughs> then say something completely <laughs> on the polar opposite it's side. Posted. <laughs> this whole show, I remember uh, I posted. You, on that issue, I just say dumb shit. But if you po- if you put a book out where everything's supposed so philo- uh, philosophical, everything you say from that point on, they're gonna be looking like, was that? <laughs> Is that the same person? Is that the same? Or are they going to look into that dumb bro, shit you that's said? Bro, that's life, though. Life is one walk. One, life is one big contradiction, bro. Everything that's great is somebody's awful. You know what I mean? Yeah, but that's like Malcolm X doing a, a, a stand-up comedy set. But and he would Nat kill, Le- bro. Yeah, but then Nat leaking, so nobody knows if <laughs> <laughs> which one's like, which I, I believed him about would being oppressed and all this, but... <laughs> Uh, he was fucking at this Women set. be shopping. <laughs> what? Malcolm? Malcolm White got hacked material. <laughs> he was new. He was just starting off. <laughs> he didn't know what else to talk about. <laughs> you ever have a white cop follow you? <laughs> I don't know. Something like that would probably be his uh, his routine. Um, thanks for hopping on, Slave man. names be happy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a slave named Joy. Come here, Joy. Why are we doing this, Craig? <laughs> we can't do this right now. Uh, first of all, I do think you should do a philosophical book. I feel like I've learned a lot from you on um, parenting aspect. I think you you preach patience, you know, as a as a uh, as a person as a parent, mm-hmm. which no one does. Right? <laughs> there's no sit your ass down for you know. There's always that. I learned so much on my journey, man. I used to have a hard time with my son, uh, the youngest the one that plays basketball. Mm-hmm. Like, he was just, I would tell, and it was because I wasn't being patient with him. I was like, do as I say, not as I do. Right. And we got to a point where I was like, you know, what is it? What Mm. do you want? He was like, I just want to say what I want to say, and that's it. And I was like, all right, fine. (laughs) And so anytime I'd let him say what he wanted to say, and then I'd be like, all right, and you're punished for this long. And he'd be like, cool. Yeah. No problem. All right. I was like, all right, that's all. I just had to listen to you say. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to be heard, Dad. <laughs> that's all it was. I just, I was like, oh, I could do that with everybody. Let yeah. me just hear it and then throw that shit in the trash. I was like, nah, that was dumb. <laughs> but I heard you. <laughs> and my daughter's two, and the patience gets tested, right? But you know it's worse when they're two. Because you're like, she doesn't know what she's doing. She's a little psycho. No, they know they embarrass you at two. Right. So once you throw that out the <laughs> with window. With that scream? Yeah. Ah! The, yeah, like, yeah, he's that. killing me. <laughs> But once you be like, eh, now we're past that, yeah. I'll, I'll take that screen. Yeah. Then they start thinking of other ways than 
there's a communication. Yeah, she though. hit a new scream today, and I was like, oh, that was that was a new one. That was cute. That was cute. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you're still in your room, though. Yeah, I used to love my son fall out and kick his feet. Like, oh, that, that's cute. Look at you. Ah, okay. But now with the phones, oh, just record them. Be like, oh, yeah, yeah, we go watch this later in the living room. <laughs> they hate that. That's why I think it's dope that uh, you do a show about you but your philosophies on how to do punishments you told me this thing about giving your kids everything so there's more to take away from them mm-hmm. yes it wasn't a thing about like yo you got to snatch him up and you got to do all this stuff you was like yo just take away the things they want pay attention to your kids you'll see what they like the most and be like huh okay you just like that one gi joe I'm going to let you keep all the rest of them. <laughs> and this one's coming with me. <laughs> See how you do. And that's so, so my wife and kids, bro. That's, that's diabolical when you think about it. You're a terrorist. It's simple. <laughs> it's like, all right, you, a kid will always outthink you if you think on a kid's level. Yeah. Yeah. You're they, genius, bro. I'm like, they don't care. They'll bang their head on the floor. Right. They'll take it there. Yeah. There's no reasoning, really. <laughs> if you come down to that level. Yeah. You just have to. Like, you're a genius, Craig. What is something, the last thing you would tell people who feel like they can't do it, who feel like there's all these excuses, uh, you know, bothering them, whether it's my husband doesn't support it, uh, money, time, what do you tell people to help them get out their own way? Uh, you'll never do it if you spend your time and effort uh, thinking how you can't do it when you could be using that time to figure out how you can do it. Uh, a lot of people get caught up in. And I, I just had this discussion with my son. He'll he'll give me thirty minutes of how he can't do something, and then I'll give him two seconds of how he can. And he'll be like, "I didn't think of that," and I'll be like, "Because you kept thinking of all the ways why you couldn't." All right. And it's really as simple as this is the way I can. All right. Now achieving that may be harder. Right. But if you keep thinking the ways I can, you'll, you'll get, get there. there. No doubt. Come on, man. Craig Wayne's with the philosophics. Positive, Philosophic man. Wayne, Craig. <laughs> Philosophic Craig. Philosophic I think, you Craig. know what it is? I think when I turned 30 and started smoking weed. You feel like everything changed then? Slowed, was pre it was it pre down. 30 Craig or pre weed Craig that was I didn't smoke weed ever until I turned 30. Yeah? Yeah, I don't I don't do all those drugs and all that. Weed is the one that got me that was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I couldn't sleep. I felt like I was on a roller coaster yeah, yeah. all day. That's when the money countdown. I uh-huh. do that. <laughs> and once I smoked, I was like, man, what's going to be? It's going to be. <laughs> That's the first <laughs> the first dumb philosophy that worked so much. I think like, Akuna Matata. What's going to be? Gonna you know? be. Uh, you going to bring your own strand out? Uh, we were, we were Str- looking for I, I don't smoke strain. weed. Excuse me, guys. Your own strain out? Uh, we're, we're talking to a couple companies right yeah? now. Yeah? We're going to call it. Uh, don't know yet. Right now, uh, it's it's gonna be different strains. I don't okay. want to say them because people might. Uh, Are you doing the monster? Are you know all. You should be all nicknames of yours. You got <laughs> no, like twelve. It's nicknames. gonna it's gonna be a Wayne's brand. Strain. Okay. Yeah. You should do one. That's monster, bro. People don't know monster. Only well, that's what I'm saying. They, only people back in the neighborhood know monster and juice. But the, <laughs> ain't no, there's no, it's like only people in the neighborhood know fifty as boo boo. <laughs> the world don't know them as boo boo. <laughs> Uh, thank you for coming on, bro. Thanks for having I me. I super appreciate it, man. I think we're dropping gems. Uh, I'm not gonna smoke. So you can play with the baby afterwards. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> She'll be like, "Why is Daddy so <laughs> calm <laughs> and happy? <laughs> he understands." I me. cried. He didn't tell me to go to my room or nothing. <laughs> he put me in the crib. He was just like, "That's cool." He's like, wow. "Sing that song, baby girl." Okay, I see you. I've never been high. I don't know what I'll be like, man. That's why I'm scared uh, to do it. They talk about people get paranoid and have anxiety and they jump I'm, off of bridges and think they can fly and shit. Nah, no, I'm yeah. just saying. I don't. I don't do uppers. I only do uh, indica. You might lace relaxes. my shit, Craig. I don't do lacing. That's yeah. why I, Craig usually, got lace all over. One, Look at him. One of the things. Look at I him tell, glowing in the camera. That's a, somebody one who laces your I shit. I tell people is smoke your own shit. Yeah. Don't smoke nobody else's <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah, other people. That's what I only see. We people always so pass it. I, no, that's because you're at a comedy club. And a lot of comics are broke well, and is... don't even want to take the time to invest in their own <laughs> drug. That is true. <laughs> take time to invest in your own. I've been offered weed. So I really think that if I did smoke, I'd be further in my career. Because I've been offered weed by a lot of people who are big now, who are doing stuff that I was like, damn it. I should have went and smoked with them. And a I lot of people used to come through my garage just to smoke. Yeah. I was like, man, weed was a great investment. <laughs> 
You know who got it? Craig got it. Yeah. Let's go over there. Different times of the day, be like, oh shit, where we at? We in the valley. Hey, let's go by Craig house. He got <laughs> weed. I got like two hours. I'm like, all right, I got this show. I did talk about it. It's getting better though, but I did talk about it. The anxiety. It slows it down. Like I said, you don't have to It's rare though. It just it comes out of every like <sighs> every in between jobs. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like well, well, or like right now I have a lot of jobs and then I started feeling a different pressure. Oh, that's so then I was like I got a lot of due dates. <laughs> yeah. I was like, how am I gonna get all this done by myself? Oh my god. Oh, yeah, so right I do the C B D for the pain, but it's not it doesn't have the um uh, whatever the shit is, it yeah, you yeah. go to the TAC. Nah, you need that shit to hit you and be like, hey, hold on, we gonna focus on this one thing right here for a second, partner. <laughs> <laughs> we'll and then I've seen that. people, I've seen my friends who do nothing when they smoke. You know, I can't do that. Yeah, uh, no, that's never been. Now, me. I don't know, I've seen the guys who fall asleep and the shit burns them and it falls off. Yeah, that's never been me. I wish that I if that's my ultimate goal is to be able to smoke and go to sleep. Yeah. That's what it, but I'm like, oh, if I can smoke and go to sleep, cool. I don't get when people smoke to have fun and go to sleep. Yeah. I'm like, just stay home and smoke. All right. That's why I, when I smoke, if I'm out, it's like, all right, cool. I got 45 minutes. <laughs> I'm just sleep. Craig Wayans, everybody. Look at that tight hour right there, Craig. See that? Hour, that's yeah, it, man. That's it, man. man I, why, I thought you'd be doing three hours No, there, you daddy Chaz. issues people. It's crazy, bro. <laughs> you guys... You guys have no discipline on that show. What you mean? You the one that pushed us oh, to those that. are lies, sir. Over here at CMI Society, actually, you've got to stop talking right now. We went one-on-one. -on -one. All right. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching. Till next week to CMI Society. <laughs>